Good morning, helpline. Um, hi, my friend gave me this number. She asked me to call. My husband beat me last night, and um, my children were there when he was hitting me. I joined the YWCA for personal reasons. Are you in a safe place to talk? Um, yes, he went to work this morning. Okay, I'm going to be asking you a few general questions. In 1989, my sister was murdered due to domestic violence. As executive director of the YWCA San Gabriel Valley, I'm dedicated to carrying out the mission of the agency, which is to eliminate racism, empower women, and promote peace, justice, freedom, and dignity for all. We were founded in 1935 and serve over 12,000 people per year. We have culturally appropriate, multilingual programs that meet the needs of each community that we serve. Our three core programs consist of domestic violence services, senior services, and teen education services. For the domestic violence services, we provide shelter and community aid such as peer counseling, support groups, and legal assistance. YWCA San Gabriel Valley Domestic Violence Program, My Story. If my infant daughter could have driven away in the car all by herself, I might still be with him today. I had long ago resigned myself to his violence, to screaming and threats, drugs and guns, rage and terror and filth. He had worn me down to nothing, and although I dreamed of escaping, I was just too miserable to seriously consider the possibility. Fortunately, babies aren't very good at reassuring themselves. My baby girl was counting on me as her mother to save her from that toxic environment. I didn't really care what happened to me, but I couldn't bear the thought that she might grow up thinking it was okay to live like that. Somehow, I found the courage to pack up the car, buckle her into her car seat, and drive away. I had the number for YWCA Wings Helpline in my purse. I was so scared, I thought my heart would explode. I cried for an hour, but never once looked back. I wasn't sure what to expect when I got to the shelter. I figured we'd at least have a safe place to hide out while I planned where to go next. But YWCA Wings was much more than food, clothing, and a bed to sleep in. Everyone there was so caring and compassionate. They listened whenever I needed to talk and understood exactly what I was going through. They helped me with legal issues, housing, and finance. I started to see that I could create a life for myself and my daughter that was happy and free of violence. I met other survivors and realized I was not alone and that together we could start to heal and move forward. For the first time in years, I felt hopeful. It has been almost four years since the day I claimed my freedom. A few months ago, I finally finished college and now I'm shopping around to find a good graduate school. I teach dance and yoga to children, and I also decorate cakes. My little girl just turned five. She got a kitten for her birthday. She recently learned how to swim and is quite proud of herself. We live in a little house with a garden in the San Gabriel Valley, and we are grateful every day that we have each other and that we are safe and happy. YWCA Wings is here to provide a safe place for children as well as mothers. In our children's program, we do ensure that the children have a safe place where they feel nurtured and give them a voice. We want them to share how they feel about what's happening in their lives and also to know that it's not their fault. And we have our senior services program. With this program, we provide care management, which means that we go into people's homes, assess their needs, set up the services they might require so they can live healthfully and happily in their home as long as they'd like. Mrs. Pedersen, how is your phone working out? Oh, beautifully. I love the lights on the uh, numbers because so I can, can see, see it, them very easily. So you can see when it's ringing. And I li like it also because it's loud. Yes. And I can hear the people talking. Good. Where well, before I lost a lot of conversation, I couldn't hear them. We assess activities of daily living and then we coordinate the services for them. She's hard of hearing, so we assisted her with our obtaining 
a higher amplification phone. She, did, she has a family that lives kind of far, so we assisted her with coordinating transportation services. We also assisted her with finding someone to come and help her clean her home. Um, we also assisted her with uh, obtaining home delivered meals. So all those are great resources for her to have in order for her to be able to remain in her own home. We also provide telephone reassurance and we provide meals, over 375,000 meals per year. Some are delivered to the home. Well, just God bless the whole program. <laughs> it's been a real boon for us. These are the frozen meals. Put an ice pack to keep it nice and cold. And you zip it up. Bread and apples, oranges, and bananas. And we're off to the client's house. Well, I don't know how my daughter found out about you, but she arranged it. Well, she's an RN and she deals with older people. She could see that we were struggling. And so she called and she said, would you mind? Well, we'll try it. And it's been a very a positive experience. Mm -hmm. Some are served at congregate sites like senior centers. The Langley Senior Center in Monterey Park is one example of a senior center where meals are served. Our senior services program utilizes over 300 volunteers each year. Agency-wide, we have about 450 volunteers. People ask us all the time how they can help our agency, and I always tell them they can be an intern or they can volunteer because we have many volunteer positions. You can also do a number of other things. You can provide gifts of products or services, or you can provide gifts of cash or make a bequest in your will. You can also request a presentation about the issues or the services our agency provides. And this is actually how our teen education program got started. Teachers requested presentations about teen dating violence because they saw it as an issue among their students. These presentations have grown each year as more and more teachers request them. A 2009 study by the Family Violence Prevention Fund and Liz Claiborne found that one in three teenagers report being physically or sexually abused or threatened by someone they are dating. In the YWCA here, we reach about 2,500 teens annually in our teen education program. We recently received a grant by the California Department of Public Health to implement a new project called Respect for All. The project is geared towards middle schools who open up, share, and dialogue on issues that are difficult to discuss, like bullying. Because bullying, name calling, and other types of violence, including teen dating violence, do not occur in isolation. There was this guy who was overweight and they were making fun of him. And I felt really bad and I'm like, that's just messed up. You shouldn't be doing that, you don't know him. And this is like the first time I had ever stood up for like a stranger and, and I was like, should I do it or should I shouldn't? And then I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna do it even though it's not my business. I should just go in because it's not right. And I was like, you know what, you better go tell that kid that you're sorry because I'm gonna go tell the principal and it's not cool of you to say that because what if he starts to believe in that and he's just gonna get that in his head. He went to apologize to that kid and that kid felt good. I know he did. He's like, thank you very much. And I'm like, yeah, sure. I helped this guy and I just felt much better. I felt really good. The YWCA San Gabriel Valley has a community board of directors that oversees its operations. And this is Anita Ron, the board president. My sister was murdered. She was a victim of domestic violence. Because of this, I felt it was very important to go out there and find an organization that I felt was trying to fight the cause and making sure that sisters, mothers were safe, that families were safe, and they were trying to make any effort to break the cycle. By every hour that I volunteer, I feel that I'm making a difference. And you can make a difference too. From domestic violence with our WINGS program, to our teens or with our seniors fighting to stay in their homes and wanting to have the comfort of just being around something that they know. We're in that situation now as a family. My mom's 81 years old and we caretake her. But what happens to the other seniors in our community that don't have large families or family members that can be there 24 hours a day assisting them? This is where the YWCA gets involved. I'd like to thank all our supporters for every dollar 
and every hour that you have volunteered. Because with that, it's made a difference. It's made a difference in all our communities. Thank you.